consequential is this for the business community and more specifically the tech community, especially given uh, the trade war that is happening with China? Oh, I think it's very important. Uh, just renaming the deal gives it new life. And there are certain specific provisions that fundamentally mean we're going to have more inflation in the United States. It's going to make prices go up. Uh, for the tech sector, it actually shows there's hope for a deal with the Chinese. And we'll get a lot of loud blustering, a lot of aggressive language, and then suddenly, bang, you get a deal. So that's potentially promising, actually. Well, and, and there's the question of whether, you know, the bluster will actually lead to uh, the, 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 the consequences that the president has threatened or whether this will, um, you know, in, in general, it, it is just bluster. It is just potentially marketing on behalf of the president. Well, look, bottom line, the president is a property guy. This is how you do property deals. You put everything on the table. You say everything is open for negotiation. You make a lot of threats. So this reflects the president's negotiating style, whether we like it or not. Um, and fundamentally, it is usually in trade negotiations, you do reach impasse after impasse. What does this mean for the auto industry? We know that the traditional auto industry, you know, is, is, is certainly affected by trade with Canada and Mexico and has also been fiercely competing with tech giants in uh, the realm of, of self-driving and connected cars. Um, what does this mean for U.S. automakers? Look, automakers are going through vast change. You know, already we're going to enter the driverless car era where we're not going to need the traditional combustion engine. We're going to have electric engines. We're going to have so much innovation is taking place anyway. But what this deal does is it's going to raise the cost of producing automobiles in the U.S. So workers are definitely going to get paid more. Parts are going to cost more. And that cost will get passed on, and it's going to show up in the form of higher inflation rates for the broad economy and higher inflation rates for the general public. That's going to be an issue for the Fed. So it's, you know, take from one hand and, and give with the other. We get a deal, but it has some consequences that are both beneficial for workers and adverse for general inflation circumstances. It's an interesting exercise in leadership because the president will definitely claim credit that he's gotten something done here that everyone said was impossible. And it's kind of hard to take away from that. And it has to make you more encouraged that we're going to get some kind of an equal outcome on China. Meantime, the dynamics in China and with China are, are very different. You know, the threat there, the concern there is their tech leadership, their AI leadership, and whether they could beat the United States in an AI arms race, if you will. How will that then impact the actual uh, fallout from this potential trade war or, or resolution, if there is one? Yeah, well, I have a whole section about this in my new book, and we are in the new arms race, which is for computational power. Uh, the Chinese are building a facility right now in Anhui, which will have one million times the computational capability of the entire planet today in about two years' time. We've introduced Summit, which is a supercomputer that can do in one second what takes a human being 6.3 billion years to calculate. So this is where the action is, because the more Internet of Things, the more data that you have, the more you need computational power to support it. That's the arms race. So whatever deal we make on trade, it doesn't even begin to encompass what the new issues are going to be in that world.